our immune system protects the body from foreign invaders like bacteria, fungi, and toxins. By protecting the body with antibodies, the immune system helps us neutralize substances that could negatively influence our health. The immune system does a pretty good job of differentiating between foreign invaders and our own cells, but this isn't always the case. Autoimmune diseases like lupus are a condition where the body mistakenly attacks itself rather than these potential threats. Autoimmune conditions are still relatively misunderstood, and some people are more prone to developing autoimmunity than others. Certain autoimmune conditions run in families, while others seem to be undetected among relatives. Lupus is a term used to identify a group of immune diseases that have a similar clinical presentation. It's a chronic autoimmune condition that can have a widespread influence on various organs and tissues within the body. Fatigue, muscle aches and pain, joint swelling and inflammation are just some of the uncomfortable symptoms that someone with lupus may experience during a flare-up. The cause of lupus is relatively unknown, but there are many factors and possible causes that may contribute to this critical condition. So today, we're going to be revealing the three possible causes of lupus and what you can do to support the body when dealing with this inflammatory disease. But first, before we begin, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our Women's Wellness channel. Plus, stay tuned for how you can get your hands on a free gift. Now, let's get back to today's video. There are several types of lupus, with systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE, being the most common type. This type of lupus is systemic, causing inflammation throughout the whole body and affecting multiple organ systems. SLE causes inflammation of the joints, skin, blood, heart, kidneys, and more, causing flare-ups and states of remission. Some people with SLE will have regular flare-ups, causing symptoms to arise often, while others will only experience symptoms every couple of years. Common symptoms of SLE include fatigue, muscle and joint pain, sensitivity to sunlight and face rashes, or what's known as a butterfly rash across the nose and cheeks. The first possible cause of lupus is a complex one. Hormones. Our hormones are our body's chemical messengers. They're produced by the endocrine glands and they travel around the bloodstream, instructing other organs and tissues and controlling many of our body's processes, from our metabolism to our sleep. Our hormones regulate our blood sugar levels, blood pressure, mood, and they even influence our gut health. So it's no surprise that our hormones are one of the three causes of such a systemic condition like lupus. It's been found that 9 out of 10 occurrences of lupus are among females, which leads us to believe that this condition is influenced by hormonal changes that may be more specific to women, including high levels of estrogen. In fact, a 2014 study found that women are more likely to experience an autoimmune disease at a rate of about 2 to 1 in comparison to men. While both men and women have estrogen, it's been suggested that this hormone may play a role in lupus as the production of estrogen is much greater in women. Next on our list of the three possible causes of lupus is something that in comparison to hormones, we may have a little more control over. Our environment. Environmental factors like viruses or potential chemicals have been suggested to contribute to lupus, but this hypothesis is still relatively unknown. A Western diet is considered to be a pretty influential factor when it comes to autoimmune disease in general, with high fat and high sugar foods linked to widespread inflammation, which triggers an immune response. It's also been shown that the exposure to toxic components within cigarettes may cause a genetic mutation and activate genes linked to lupus. With lupus being a condition that involves the immune system, other environmental factors like infections have been shown to play a role in this condition. Infections like Epstein-Barr virus or glandular fever are more common in those with lupus, suggesting this infection may play a role in the progression of the disease. Last on our list of the three possible causes of lupus is... Genetics. It's now been identified that over 50 genes are associated with the progression of lupus. 
Although not all of these are linked to the direct cause of lupus, they are believed to contribute to it. Epigenetics is the study of how genes are turned on or off, which means that although we may have the same genetic patterning as our family members, certain genes may not be effectively turned on unless we expose ourselves to an environment in which they are triggered. However, like many autoimmune diseases, it's not uncommon that a condition like lupus runs in the family. And evidence now suggests that there's a higher chance of someone developing lupus if another family member already has it. So if some of these causes are out of our control, is it possible to slow the progression of this condition? The good news is there is evidence to suggest that diet and lifestyle factors may reduce the severity and frequency of flare-ups and help to manage the uncomfortable symptoms experienced with lupus. Because inflammation is a large factor contributing to flare-ups, focusing on an anti-inflammatory diet and reducing processed, high-sugar foods is an important lifestyle intervention. There is also evidence to suggest that both omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin D are crucial nutrients to support the symptoms of lupus. In fact, one study among 31 patients with SLE found that there were significant improvements in symptoms after supplementing with vitamin D over an eight-week period. Another study published in Rheumatic and Musculoskeletal found that exercising the upper body was a key intervention in improving musculoskeletal symptoms experienced in lupus. The 24-week randomized control trial found that exercising the upper extremities on a regular basis led to improvements in the ability to perform everyday tasks. That concludes today's video. We hope this video helped you understand the various factors that contribute to the progression of lupus and how you can support yourself with this condition. Before you go, let us know. Do you experience lupus as an autoimmune condition or know of anyone else who does? Share your experience with our community in the comments. And remember to like this video, subscribe, and hit the alert bell to stay up to date with us. Plus, don't forget to download your free gift, 25 Energy Boosting Superfoods for Women, by clicking the link in the description below. Have a healthy and joyful day.